Hey guys, Mediocrity4 here. Before the before this podcast gets started, I just wanted to let you guys know why this is up so late and why there's no video, why there's no cameras in it. Uh, so the night that we were recording this, which was Wednesday night, um, things were going on at my end to where that prevented me from recording this podcast from my own computer. Um, Things were going on at this very room that prevented me from being able to use uh, my computer th the way I normally do. So I had to use a laptop. Uh, I had to use my dad's laptop to communicate and to record this. And never again. Never again. Um, the laptop is Windows 7. And I don't know how or why. But... About an hour and 25 minutes in, it was a, I got it pulled up, pulled up right now, an hour and 26 minutes and 45 seconds in, uh, the, the entire capture just crashed. Um, so the last, I want to say like 15 minutes of the podcast just, poof, lost forever. Um, on top of that, despite my best efforts... Like, Discord was running fine on my end. I had almost, like, no lag at all except for, like, a couple times, and I mentioned it uh, within the podcast itself. But when I went back and looked at the capture, the cameras froze uh, for pretty much the entire thing. It was, the video was basically unusable. Um, and so I had to wait until we can, uh, till Robert, Dude, and I could get back together and kind of just talk for the last 20, for about 20 minutes, um, le probably less than that, uh, I'm recording this little prelude before we actually go ahead and do that, but, uh, it, it cuts off, um, when we're talking about, uh, Vader finding out about Leia, and from there we, we talked about, like, the, the conclusion, how everything turned out, uh, the special editions and our final verdicts, so, Without further ado, here is the very, very late Beyond podcast, Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Hello and welcome to the Beyond podcast. We are talking about Star Wars Return of the Jedi. I am Seth Rich's Vindicated Corpse Mediocrity 4. <laughs> I am still sick. I am dude with the heck. And... I have a bit of a rant to make this episode. I am Robert. Ooh. So we are talking about Return of the Jedi, which is the third uh, Star Wars movie. It's the final in the trilogy. And it's also the one that had really big expectations and a lot of money thrown at it right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Um... So much so that little uh, anecdote thing here, um, it was Fox was so nervous about spoilers and leaks and people harassing people on the set that uh, everybody working on the movie when they were filming on the uh, Fox back lot anyway, yeah. uh, wore like uh, logos and stuff for a non-existent movie called Blue Harvest, yep. which which was its own like. Which was allegedly its own like sci-fi fantasy thing, which you know I I've read I think the synopsis. It was supposed to be like a, I think it was supposed to be like a horror, wasn't it? Or yeah, yeah, so, something like that. Yeah. Like some children record so, something. I think yeah might actually have some viability <laughs> one day. It, you know, yeah. someone and, so get on it. And they Thanks also uh, gave false scripts to certain actors who they thought. Uh, were going who they thought might leak stuff. One, including one that revealed Lando as the last hope. So, but yeah, or allegedly. that would be different. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, basically, if they felt like an actor or a set member might uh, make some, yeah, might reveal some, might leak something, they gave them a false script with just enough to tell them, you know, what they need to know until the day of shooting the different things, yeah. 
And then wasn't yeah. didn't, didn't Blue Harvest become the name of the uh, Family Guy parody? Yes, yes. Yeah, and first. that that so yeah. if if you've watched the Family yeah, Guy parody and you have no idea what that is supposed to be a reference to, that's what it's a reference to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so and this so yeah, also they went, had they went all out avoiding any spoilers here. So yeah. Yeah, and they also had a title change. Uh, partway through production, it was going to be called Revenge of the Jedi. Then George Lucas was like. Revenge is kind of a strong word. I don't think the Jedi would do yeah. that. So he yeah, named it Return of the hate Jedi. Jedi. Hate, is a, hate is a strong word, but he really, really, really doesn't like the Emperor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. That, yeah. By the way, unpopular opinion, that song was way better than Hey Delilah. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, w w which song are you talking about? Uh, hate by the plain white tees. Oh, uh, oh, oh yeah. Story. I'm not. I'm not yeah. familiar with plain white tees. I don't know that much of their stuff. I just know that one. Gotcha. <laughs> I know a few other songs. I know a few other songs. They're actually not bad, but yeah. The only one I know is uh, "Rhythm of Love." You don't know "Hey There, Delilah." That's like. Well, I know "Hey." Movie. I know a "Hey There, okay. Delilah." Obviously, but... okay. Okay, so be, be... that. That's why I was like, "What other song?" That's yeah. the escape room that everybody knows. Yeah, I, I think they also had a song that was like one, two, three, four, five, or something like that. But I, I don't know. My sisters would know. Their lyrics aren't very good. Their their there's their music's actually not bad, but their lyrics are kind of repetitive. Anyway. Yeah. So back one to thing. Star Wars. So one thing we touched on this in the previous podcast, the whole merchandising aspect of Star Wars. Well. Yep. Uh, this one, Return of the Jedi, is when that kind of got a little out of hand, and my theory on why it got a little out of hand uh, has something to do with something that Return of the Jedi had that A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back did not. Ronald Reagan as president. His whole restricting... Theory. Well, the whole thing about uh, Ronald Reagan's view on art is that he took away a lot of the restrictions that various um, bureaucracies had on entertainment. Uh, the big one being that uh, in the 70s and stuff, you couldn't uh, make a cartoon or movie just for commercial purposes. And thanks to Reagan's policies, we got stuff like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, He-Man, Transformers, all these cartoons and all these movies that existed only to sell toys. I mean, The Wizard, terrible movie as that is, over, well, it's a cult classic, whatever. Uh, that movie would not exist if not for the policies that Ronald Reagan put forward in uh, throughout the 80s. And then what the 90s. Being in, uh, yeah, what if being an actor had anything to do with that? And stuff uh, like that? I, I'm sure it did. I think it had more to you do with, with so I think it had more to yet. do with uh, his whole business sense with the whole uh, trickle down economics, give, give businesses more money and then hope that it trickles down to all the workers. Which works in theory, but only if those businesses, those businessmen, are good people. Yeah. Wait a minute. So Reagan's responsible for like a massive amount for like a lot of TV, then basically because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Animation? Yeah. That pause. That's really. Yeah, he got he got rid of uh like the seventies are widely considered the worst decade for animation, and a lot of that has to do with um I'm blanking on the the censorship bureaucracy that was around at that time. It was like, it wasn't the MPAA. MPAA came later. Or they came out around that time, but MPAA is, is still around. Uh, yeah. But it was, it was, uh, oh, he also got rid of uh, the comics code, that like really dogmatic comics code uh, that made all really? the comic books in the 50s Man, so boring and all the comic books in the 60s and 70s so tame. Like that, uh, that's, so what, so that's what, that's what, that well, the reason that Batman got so camp. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's why in the eighties you had this resurgence of characters like Daredevil and Punisher mm -hmm. and these like, and, and these deconstructionist things like Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. I like the Dark Knight yeah. Returns. But... Yeah. A, lo a lot of that is because of, uh, not so much Reagan himself, but his policies, his sense, uh, like the, the, role of the president is to kind of set the tone for the country for the time that he's in office 
And that was mm-hmm. that was Reagan's entire thing is taking away restrictions on businesses and trickle down economics. Gotcha. And now that you've had your obligatory history lesson with the <laughs> with the semi professional teacher, uh, this movie takes place. I want to say three years after Empire. Yeah, it's maybe it's to be two three years after, and in all that time, they apparently had like. Or according to 3PO, they had no idea what happened to Lando or Chewbacca, although apparently they, I don't know. I guess it's a question of how much they actually told 3PO, but yeah. I think they, I don't think they told 3PO anything. That did, probably that, not. He, he probably can't PO, lie to save his life, yeah. 3PO is like the abridged version of Krillin. He just can't shut his mouth when, his, he when he's scared. <laughs> yeah. Can't shut yeah. up when he's scared, bro. That's definitely something I wanna I'll bring up probably more when we talk about Jar Jar, but man, 3PO is annoying as shit. And yeah. I he, he really Jar gets grading that in, much. He gets grading in this movie. I think it's because yeah. like with the first movie, he was kind of the one of the audience surrogates, like him and R2 were the audience surrogates. Yeah, uh and, and then in Empire Strike and Empire Strikes Back, uh the joke was that he was annoying and so a lot of the comedy came with how annoying he was and how annoyed Han was at him. Yeah. Uh, but in this one, they give him like the whole um, road to El Dorado. It's good to be a god thing. Yeah. They get they the like they give him a lot. To... Anyone has to that is Luke just laughing at him because he's an yeah. idiot. Yeah. yeah, like they give him a lot. They try giving him a lot to do, but I mean, come on, he's just an interpreter. Yeah, exactly. How much can you really do with that? And... Yeah. Yeah. But that, that was yeah. like maybe an attempt to justify his existence, but it's like it it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, no, he is it's kind of funny, like when you have stuff like him, because then I watched I think I watched Return of the Jedi and then I watched episode and watched Finn and Menace like a day later, I wanna say. Mm-hmm. Like, man, like relatively Jar Jar's not that bad when you have 3PO. <laughs> it's yeah. true. And 3PO is still annoying in in uh Return of the Jet in in uh episode one also. Yeah. Like and that's the one thing two, I noticed. Yeah. That, yeah. So it's like, yeah, we'll we'll get to that because I, I've got some things to say both in defense yeah, and against Jar Jar, but uh yeah. But yeah, it is kind of, but yeah, I said it uh two weeks ago when we talked about episode four. Three PO was Jar Jarring before Jar Jar, so Yeah, no, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So yeah. But <laughs> But I mean, Luke comes in all badass and shit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I know Luke, I I think, is the only one who actually knew what was going on. Like him and R two, were the only ones who knew what was going on. Because fucking, if there's if there is one lesson you can learn from Star Wars throughout the entire series, Mm -hmm. it's that the astromechs always know what's going on. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, yep. I mean, and like I would say, just R two, except for in Star Wars Rebels, uh, Chopper always knows what's going on too. Yeah. So the droids just listen to the astromechs; they know what's the fuck up. Okay, R two and and Chopper, they always yeah, know what's exactly. Going on. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. And that kind of brings me to the main kind of talking point. Well, this is the return of to Tatooine. And the yeah. reason why they chose why Lucas chose Tatooine is because he felt like there needed to be some closure there. And there's actually a deleted scene where Luke goes back to uh, Obi Wan's hut, and that's where he constructs his uh, new the new lightsaber, lightsaber he's sporting yeah. in this. Uh, which mm-hmm. uh, that's cool. I didn't which is scene, which is scene, cool. which is a scene that would have been pretty cool, but I really prefer the way that they revealed the lightsaber in the yeah, theatrical yeah, yeah. version. Yeah. A lot more climatic and exciting. Like, oh my gosh, he has a new lightsaber! Yeah. Yeah, and, appara- and apparently, in that three-year time skip, Luke became a badass. Yeah, yeah. he got good. <laughs> well, at least they gave him yeah. a decent amount uh, of time this time, I want to say. Yeah. Like, to actually yeah. train. Because this was more believable for me, because I understand, like, my guess is, like, maybe he did talk to Obi-Wan and Yoda a little bit. I'm sure, I'm assuming. And so he probably had some sort of guidance. And even if he yeah. didn't, like they sort of imply that Luke's so good that it's not that out yeah. of the that realm of possibility that force, he's gotten yeah. this good that this quickly. Yeah. 
So. Well, and the Force is all about feeling anyway, and it's not like... I mean, he, he's been in the Rebel Alliance this entire time, so he's probably, like, really physically fit anyway. And he, mm -hmm. even when he was starting his training on Dagobah, he was doing, like, freaking flip kicks and stuff like that with Yoda on his yeah. back. Yep. Uh, yes, indeed. But, yeah, I don't think he went back to Dagobah is the thing. Like, that's something that always kind of confused me as a kid because, you know, growing up, I assumed that, like, in between he went back to Dagobah to do more training. But then, like, actually... So then why it, would it have taken him so well, long to ask Yoda and Darth not, Vader? Yeah, yeah. Listening to the dialogue, it's like, they they haven't spoken since Empire Strikes Back, have they? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and so... But yeah, it is kind of the, uh, I don't know, you do get that line from Luke where he says, uh, you know, there's nothing in her where... Yeah, on that has that line about you know I think my eyes are getting better in Luke's telling like, ah eh, there's nothing to see I used to live here so, yeah but, yeah Luke's just so done with Tatooine to... yeah which is pretty like I mean that is accurate to even how he was in Episode Four you know he was bored out of his mind and stuff so yeah but yeah, yeah. but the point it's, I it's, but the it's, point it's I wanted to like, he still doesn't have, it's like he has fond memories of Tatooine <laughs> yeah. So the point I want to make in bringing up Tatooine here is because Tatooine is the first planet we've seen twice. Mm -hmm. every, every other planet has been new. Like, this is the first time we've returned to a planet. Uh, and it's not the first... It's not the last time we'll see Tatooine. And uh, even the last time we've seen Tatooine, it's not the last time we've seen Tatooine because Jakku is basically just another Tatooine. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, my... One only of, that's one son, one though! <laughs> Yeah, it's that's Tatooine, but with one son. <laughs> that's, that's everyone's complaint with Force Awakens. Biggest complaints with Force Awakens. E even like, okay, even I people who love them. Even people who love the movie. I yeah. but why do you have to make a carbon copy? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty infuriating. Yeah. Well, the point I wanted to make is uh, that this is the third act of this uh, saga, this trilogy. Yeah. And so it has to wrap up loose ends. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's... Star Wars is deceptively simple. Like, there's not a whole lot to, like, really do. Like, they had to rescue yeah. Han. That Like, they had to rescue Han from, after the last episode. Uh, yep. They... Luke already got a hand back at the end of the last episode. Like, so that's resolved. Yeah, and so the, only so the only thing left to resolve is finally taking the fight to the Emperor and defeating him. Yeah. Slash Luke confronting Beta and resolving completing his, his training. Yeah, yeah, resolving his yeah resolving his daddy issues. Yep. So there's a problem I've noticed with a lot of third acts, and this I think Return of the Jedi is actually actually suffers from it the least out of a lot of major trilogies, and mm -hmm. that is the death by expectations. Uh. Because the first two movies were so good, so groundbreaking, and so legendary, yeah. there was really no way Return of the Jedi was gonna compete. Yeah, it, it spent like with the with the three year release schedule, which I think is a great release schedule. Like it gives enough time to actually let the movie sink in, uh, without yeah. like just being easy cash grabs, uh. And with Every also with and year, also yeah. and also without waiting too long, uh, mm -hmm. which that's actually my biggest complaint with how Disney is handling Star Wars is that they're, it's Star Wars. You don't need to have it every year. Yeah. Once every three years is plenty. Once every two years with the modern Hollywood and how like quickly we process things now with the internet. Two yeah. every two years, that's fine. We don't need it every year. Um. Which is probably why they try to space it out with anthologies, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we'll, we'll, least... get, we'll get to that when we get to Rogue One. All right. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, you think, like, Godfather 3, Dark Knight Rises. Mm -hmm. uh, Indiana yeah. Jones actually hit a sophomore slump and then got better after Temple of Doom, so I'm not going to yeah, count I'll that. With that yeah. uh, Batman Forever, which I think Batman Forever is actually better than Batman Returns, but I know I'm in the minority there. 
Uh, I actually argue that uh, the that Indiana Jones three is the best of the first three. Also, just my personal preference. I think one's a bit. I think one the first one's a little great. bit better. Uh, yeah, two and two's got, like, good. And Temple Doom's good. Temple Doom's like yeah. the like the three three out of four star Indiana Jones movie. Uh, maybe two and a half stars. Yeah. Uh, and then. Let, Terminator like uh, three. yeah, Terminator three, Spider Man three, which I like more yeah. than a lot of people. X Men three, uh, there's some other threes yeah. out there. Taken three, which I don't think any of the Takens were actually all that good, but yeah, yeah, even Taken yeah. was a bit overrated. If we're honest, yeah, <coughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah a... definitely. That's yeah, you always have that. I mean, even with even re- even Return of the King, which is widely considered the best third installment ever. Uh, hits a lot of those slumps just because it kind of drug on a little too long for a single yeah. movie, but it works in the context of a nine-hour yeah. epic. Uh, and then Toy Story three, yeah. which that's probably the most solid ten out of ten trilogy out there. And Toy Story Toy Story three is a little bit it, it's a little bit weaker than the first two, I think. Hmm. Granted, like, the fir- hey, granted the first. It's been a while. A lot. Well, see, there's the thing, so the good. cool thing about Toy Story is that, like, there's actually debate there. Like, with Godfather, there's no debate. Godfather three is. Oh yeah. yeah. I think yeah, it's a good. I think it's a good it. movie. I think it's a good movie. But yeah. it's like a seven out of ten. Yeah. Compared to the ten yeah. out of ten, ten out of ten, Godfather Part One and Part Two. Yeah, most people do admit that. Do acknowledge that. Yeah, even if you think. Um, even if you enjoy Godfather three, which is fine, like it is kind of the weaker, the weakest of the three in, of the three installments. Yeah, and I'd say the Toy Story but, movies. Even if you think one's better than the other, I'd still say it's yeah, it's it's still it's still like ten, 10 out of ten, ten out of ten, a really really high nine out of ten. Maybe yeah, I'd still put it at ten. I'd still put them all as tens to be perfectly honest. I think yeah. they're all ten worthy. I would need to do yeah. a. More and, the, and then Star Wars, and then Star Wars is is ten out of ten, ten out of ten, and then I'd say a solid nine, not not a high nine, just a solid nine. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with the end, with the last sequence, which we'll talk about uh, closer to the end, because we got the Tatooine segments, which goes on for a very long time. Yeah, I forgot how yeah, long these went on. This this yeah. part went on for, which I don't necessarily dislike. It yeah, just... it's like over a third of the movie. It's almost half the movie. Yeah, yeah I think it went you on put it. I was expecting. Yeah, I think you put a pretty good media a little while ago when you said that this was almost like two different movies in a way. And yeah, yeah, I think I said that last podcast is kind of a primary. Like this like... was. Yeah, like I kind of understand that, like the scenes in Tatooine are maybe there to ex- to let us to like show us Luke's progress and his growth and stuff like that so that uh like we understand but to give us a bit of a better idea of where he's at before he goes to confront Vader but it is still kind of weird that yeah that you need this very very that you need a third of the movie to tell us hey Luke's gotten stronger so yeah yeah and uh, it's also really for Han's sake uh, that's why yeah. this whole sequence exists. Yeah, and to also let us know, hey, this is how they got Han back. Yeah, and also, and also to uh, stroke George Lucas's love for Flash Gordon because, oh my goodness, the monsters! <laughs> the Ga- yeah. you got the Gamorreans, you got uh, Bib Fortuna with his giant penis head. Uh, you got the Rancor, the Sarlacc. <laughs> Slave Leia looks straight out of freaking uh, <laughs> one of those campy fifty sci-fi movies. Yeah. Uh, or uh like a cheesy fifties monster movie. Or like a Star Trek girl, yeah. Yeah. Uh like <laughs> like this really <laughs> feels like like the whole Tatooine segment feels more like an episode than anything else in Star Wars. Like it feels like an episode yeah. from a TV show. Yeah. Like a like a season like a season premiere. Yeah. Maybe, Why is yeah. Why does Bib Fortuna like? How is he a Twi'lek that doesn't look like a Twi'lek? I think it's supposed to be like the males look different from the females and stuff but, like that. But if you because mostly other... all we have to compare him to are females, right? No, no, no. But my point is, you you can you see Twi'leks in other like Star Wars things. They don't really so, look like him very much. 
They look a lot more like those female Twi'leks. A little bit different. Sure. Yeah, so the Twi'leks... He looks like an albino that is, Twi'lek. That's a he good point, actually. Might be, yeah, he might thing. actually be an albino <laughs> Twi'lek. And also the yeah, way maybe. he like wraps his his um, tails yeah. around his... That's weird. That's not... Yeah, maybe I always, like, I uh, always assumed that uh, it was that because... Is he is a little weird looking, yeah. I always yeah. assumed it was because he's underground all the time. Like, he never gets any sun. Maybe. But also, like, the fact that, like, he has claws and stuff like that instead of fingernails and stuff. I kind of see where you're, what you're talking about, that, yeah, he does look a little more... He looks kind of deformed and stuff like that. I could argue that, like, maybe he wraps his uh, tentacles around his head or, wh or whatever they're called. Around his maybe head that's like just that, like what he's sharp, into. Like, yeah, like, maybe as, like, a fashion statement or something. But I was thinking that more is like a true. Kink. He does look a little more animalistic than other, twi than other Twi'leks and other Fran... In other uh, media in the franchise, that's a good point. So I yeah, know. I mean, I even know. in this movie, because we get plenty of Twi'leks in this movie, and <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, and you can't, yeah, and it's not, yeah, and it's not just the females that look like that. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they, I don't know. <laughs> I noticed that they stay cons fairly consistent with in at least in the anime, uh, Clone Wars and um, uh, Rebels. The mm -hmm. female Twi'leks do not have the same, like, pronounced forehead that the males have. And female Twi'leks yeah. do not have the the same sharp teeth that the males have. They do actually keep it consistent that oh, okay. male Twi'leks have, like, really razor-sharp teeth. Hmm. Um, and the females seem to not have that for the most part. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, it's, I haven't paid attention to it enough, probably. But that's something yeah. I noticed. That the females have more human-like teeth, and the males have more... Um. Uh, the males have more like sharp, sharp uh, teeth. It's really interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. Um, and I think the I think a lot of the stuff in Jabba's palace is trying to kind of remake that cantina scene with a lot of the creativity, and a lot of yeah. it lands. Yeah, a lot, a, of, a the lot of it lands. Effects, yeah. Um, a lot of the, uh, these are really interesting looking creatures. Got like the freaking blue elephant do jamming on the keyboard. Uh, you got the like, like <laughs> guy on Jabba's lap, whatever passes for a lap on that fat slug. Um, got Jabba himself. You got the Rancor, you got the Sarlacc, you got all this creative stuff. Got the, the droid torture scene, which kind of freaked me out as a kid. Where apparently droids can feel pain, and they've got like the one gunk droid upside down. And he's like, yeah, and there's like, yeah, I thought that was weird. <laughs> like, th this is yeah. this is a it's a weird thing. It's like nothing else after the Tatooine stuff is quite that weird. Okay, just something real quick. I want to confirm that I looked up some pictures real quick, and yeah, um, so even in Star Wars Rebels, where Cham and uh, Harris and Dula are are in scenes together. Spoiler alert! If you haven't watched the show yet, um, he does have a more pronounced forehead, and he does still have sharper teeth. And she and Hera basically, I mean, to be honest, she basically looks like a human with tails, and she's green. So, I mean, the the female Twi'leks look a lot different from the male Twi'leks still. So okay. maybe that partly explains what's his face. But the funny thing is, I never thought he was a Twi'lek, and this is the first time I thought that I learned that Bib Fortuna was a Twi'lek. Yeah. Never would have guessed he was a Twi'lek. I thought he was something else. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, kind of random, but I just thought I'd... Nah, that's... It was a good question, no. Yeah, uh... Yeah, I think... A lot of this adds, a lot of the Tatooine stuff adds to this being a looser script. Like, a lot of the stuff in Tatooine has, like, nothing to do with the stuff going on with the Empire. Jabba's a cool villain in his own right. It's gangster. He's obviously inspired by Godfather. I wonder if Lucas was making fun of Francis Ford Coppola. I think Francis Ford Coppola actually created the character just to be like, hey, you should put that in and be like, Hey, it's like Godfather in Star Wars. They'll love it. People will laugh. Yeah. Uh, and and we did. We loved it, and we also laughed. Yeah, it's great. I, I love I mean, how I, I love how even though Jabba doesn't speak English and he has subtitles, you can always tell what he's saying without reading it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you don't actually have you to kind of have an idea. I of I kind of love that. Like that. That's a that's good. That's good writing. There, there's some like 
real good writers that can't get that across. Yeah. No, part of it is just the sounds that he makes, but yeah, he's always, he always just sounds pissed. You're amused. You're pissed. It's sort of the thing about how uh, Vader can emote without having a fucking face, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. In this but case, I mean, it's I... technically four guys emoting inside of that thing, but yeah. That suit. But, but I mean, I, I, th- I think. I never. I, I don't know. Some. I think some people might, I complained about that aspect of this film, but I kind of liked it because it gave us a time. It gave us. I, th- I thought it was nice to focus on, on the main, main characters for a little bit and then go back to kind of everything they had to do sort of thing. I don't know. I didn't really have a problem with it. Uh, I, lo- I, I love I love, I love Han's line. Like, one of the first lines he has, um, uh, it's when he meets back up with Luke and he's like, so how are things are going? And Luke's like, the same as always. That bad, huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 I love yeah. that line so much. That, that was a nice little like I don't know, that was like a little tease of like what other like that makes me wonder like what other adventures have these guys had together that em- Empire is continuing <laughs> their winning streak from uh Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. That's Rebels definitely true. Like ca- Rebels just can't catch a break. Yeah, definitely. But also I just wonder like what kind of Crap! Have uh, Han, Luke, and Leia got it into and stuff like that. That, that was, yeah, that was super fucking yeah, funny. Like just the three of them, but yeah, that was a good one. And yeah. Uh, so next, then Han. Han's always the best part. Let's yeah. be honest. And yeah. th- this, this, this whole scheme Luke puts together is kind of convoluted a bit so he sent yeah so first he actually sent lando i guess lando was always their inside guy and is the one who like told them that han was even there Mm -hmm. um so he's disguised as a palace guard then he sends 3po and r2 with a message basically being like free han solo or i'm gonna wreck you but as as a gift of goodwill i'm giving you these droids to be your slaves for a while. Uh, Probably assuming that he would not take the deal, but yeah. would take the droids anyway. Yeah. And then he sends Leia, disguised as a bounty hunter, with Chewbacca to send him in prison and get inside, mm-hmm. and then free Han and kiss him and reunite, and then get captured. He was very specific about the kiss him part. <laughs> and then get and then get captured. So Leia becomes sexy slave Leia, and Han becomes roommates with Chewie again, and he's also blind for a while. Mm-hmm. And then, and then Luke finally shows up and starts wrecking house uh, without yeah. his li- without even the lightsaber. Like he fights that, he takes on that Rancor without a lightsaber. Yeah, which is uh, he chokes up. Rock, yeah. and, oh my god, yeah. he is so cool in this. Yeah, that scene was awesome. I he just walks in, it's just like. Chokes out the Gamorrean guard just by like pointing a finger at them. Yeah. And starts oh, yeah, using no, his they... mind trick on Bim Fortuna. And Jabba's like, all the, the old Jedi mind trick. Yeah. And it is nice that like he tries it on Jabba and Jabba's just like, not working, bro. That's not gonna work on me. Yeah. And Jerry Johns pointed this out when he reviewed the movie a few years back. But, like, mm-hmm. there's that scene where Luke uses the force to grab the blaster off the guard. He was ready to shoot Jabba. He was ready to end it there. Yeah. But then he fell into the Rancor pit because, you know, the force is kind of fickle in this. <laughs> and Jabba's quick on the draw. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then he fights the Rancor, which is, like, one of my favorite Star Wars monsters. That thing is terrifying. Uh, Holy shit. And it gets a lot of mileage in the expanded universe to where, like, Every planet has rancors. <laughs> yeah. My favorite thing is still is still that guy who like is like owns it as a pet or whatever. And he's like all sad when the rancor dies. <laughs> yeah. Crying. Yeah. Th- yeah. Um, so, I think I might, be, I might be that wrong on this. That I, I might be wrong on this, but that guy, um, the actor was one of the set builders. He made. 
uh, the animatronics for it, and so when they crushed it, <laughs> that might be an urban. That might be just an urban myth, like tales from Tumblr. But I, I, wanna, I, I want to, be I want to believe that been. he actually was crying over them destroying this thing that he probably poured hours of his life into. <laughs> might have been some real emotion in there, just a little bit. I'm sure. I don't know. I feel like they probably did tell it, but they were all like, you know, actually, oh, yeah, to, it's okay for you to cry when we do this. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah. The, and, then, and then from there, so... Luke defeat, kills the Rancor, then gets, yeah. like, arrested and stuff, and then him, Han, and Chewie get taken on the skiff while Jabba's on his party barge. And I think yep. that's actually what it's called. It's called Jabba's party barge. Uh, <laughs> and get taken to the Sarlacc pit, just, which is this... That just, just sounds this... like a bad video game equivalent of the Star Wars holiday special. Jabba's, <laughs> Jabba's, Jabba's party, party barge. Jabba's party barge. I thought it was called Starry... the sail barge, but yeah. Oh, it yeah, might, that it is might be the sail barge. barge. But yeah. And... Uh, yeah. And then Luke gives Java one last word. Oh, like, wow. Frios. Nope, it's got an even more specific name. It's called the Katana. K-H-E-T-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, no, so one's, like no one's gonna remember dealt. that. It's a sail barge <laughs> class. So yeah, sail, sales barge. Yeah, so it's so it's got a it's got an actual thing. It's got an actual name. Never mind. Yeah. We can't but say it was that like anymore. Dubbed and stuff like that or Man, now I kinda like it. Well, like it was like, christened. I kinda like uh I kinda like uh the uh, Java's party barge better. <laughs> especially with R especially with R2 wanna... like being the waiter, like serving everyone drinks. Well, I was yeah. gonna say, I figured that's who you would play in Java's party barge. So you would play as R2. And your whole job is to, like, get the drinks to everybody fast enough so nobody suspects you. And then, like, at the end of the game, like, you have to go over to give Luke his lights no, and you have to aim the no, light no. properly. That's it's, the like, it's like Sneak King. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> God, I can't believe that game exists. Um, I can't either. Yeah. And so he's like, free us or die. Job is like, whatever, dude. You're about to get. GBJ. You're, you're you're about to get by the desert's a hole. Can I just say that's my favorite line of any Star Wars movie ever? Is where he just laughs and says, "GB Jedi, GB Jedi." It's just so, I don't know why. GB Jedi. GB Jedi. They're like GD Jedi. Yeah, it's all. Uh, I, I don't know what exactly he's saying, but <laughs> yeah, what I language just... is that? It's I mean, it's not like maybe like Little Jedi or something. I don't. Know. Yeah, that he's speaking. Different. He's speaking Hut. I know that. Yeah, Huddies or yeah, Hut or Huddies. I don't know how you pronounce what it, what it is, but <coughs> yeah. And so Luke, and I thought this was the coolest freaking thing I had ever seen in my life when I first watched this as a little kid. He jumps off the plank, spins around, grabs it, launches himself up, just like this triple. Front flip lands in the middle of the guards as R2 launches his lightsaber. He grabs it, turns it on. It's green. First time we've seen a green lightsaber. And he just starts using it like a wiffle ball bat. Yeah. <laughs> just starts wrecking just, house. Yeah, just starts wrecking people. Yep. Uh which and... which uh that actually and uh in the scene like Leia ends up choking Jabba out. He he was into it at first, yeah. but you know, he forgot a safe word. <laughs> um, uh, Luke, Luke and, yeah, and Luke yeah, Boba swings Fett in tries to... day. Bo Boba Fett gets freaking washed. Yeah, goes at it, and apparently it's because George Lucas didn't realize how popular. And... Yeah, or maybe he did, and, and that's yeah, why he, he gets... did it. <laughs> maybe it was just George, all like, George Lucas oh, is kind of your cool with stuff like character? that. Yeah. George Lucas yeah, is actually dude. a lot cleverer than people give him credit for when it comes to stuff like that. Fair enough. But yeah, and he just gets completely owned in. Yeah. Which is, I just find hilarious. But, but yeah. Uh, 
And, and so they save the day and escape, but then they part ways to tie up their loose ends, like Leia, Han, they all go back to the Rebellion to figure out what the next step for the Rebellion is, and Luke goes to Dagobah to finish his training, and uh, ha has a little heart-to-heart -heart with the dying cool Yoda. One. Yeah, before before Yoda kicks the bucket. Uh, yeah. But I kind of wanted to bring up something I didn't put it in my outline, but j just to kind of pad out this podcast. So, and I, I mentioned this in a previous podcast. There's a comic book called Tag in Bink. It's hmm. by, it was by Dark Horse Comics, and it's basically a parody of Star Wars by the people who make Star Wars comics. And so, Tag and Bink, hmm. they're, they're these two rebel soldiers who start off on the Tanta Four in A New Hope, and they're also cowards. And wow. so to escape the Tanta Four, they actually, like, knock out two stormtroopers and disguise themselves as stormtroopers. And then find their way onto the Death Star. They're trying to get off the Death Star and end up like running into the character stuff. Almost die a couple times. Uh, end up disguising themselves as Tie pilots to get out of there. Uh, end up crashing on Yavin Four. Make their way back to the secret Rebel base, but then it's already gone. Uh, all the Rebels have already pulled out. Uh, you get like ambushed by Boba Fett, and there's this other bounty hunter involved. And then they get all buddy buddy with them, and they help them like track the rebels back down to Bespin, where they wind up as like Bespin guards for a while. And it's basically they just keep changing disguises, try to meet back up with the Rebel Alliance, and end up like kind of liking one and a halfing it through the through the entire trilogy, uh, all the way up into all the way up to this point, where one of them is also disguised as a palace guard. And one of them is actually disguised as Boba Fett, <laughs> <laughs> and that and that's why Boba Fett sex in the scene is, scene is because he's at uh, I think he's tag I can't I can't remember like the difference I, I can't remember who's who uh, between tag and bink but yeah one of them is Boba Fett and the other one is the guard that shoots Luke in the hand. And then Although it's an accident, it. but and yeah he like dodges and falls back and cracks his head, but. Like, Luke goes to swing at him in anger, but he, like, jumps out of the way, but then jumps back and, like, hits his head, the back of his head, and gets knocked out. <laughs> um, and then they, somehow they end up, like, getting rescued by the real Boba Fett. Uh, <laughs> and then they get, like, chewed out, and then somehow they, they're also the two uh, royal guards at the end of the movie. <laughs> And so, like, when the Emperor tells them to leave, you know how they, like, go separate ways and just go around? Yeah, there's yeah the, just go around, yeah. They, they make a joke that there's not an elevator on the wrong side. Like, what are we doing? There's not an elevator on the side. I didn't know. I was just following you. Well, we can't go back. We'll look like idiots. <laughs> so they just hang out back. So they just hang out back there while Luke is fighting Vader and the Emperor. And then they end up dying in the Death Star and become Force Ghosts oh. because there is a tag and being sequel. There's a tag and being sequel where it turns out that they were actually younglings. Oh. <laughs> that that gave that gave Anakin all the bad dating advice. <laughs> it's hilarious. I I, re Don't I haven't read it. Think I'm sad. I I haven't yeah I haven't read it. No no they end up like just tell her something that like tell her she's prettier than uh something that she's talking about like and, and then he gives her the sand like sand really dude. But yeah, tagging me, it's really fun. I I read it once, and it was I was in high school, so my memory is like a little fuzzy on the details. But yeah, if you ever find it, it's by Dark Horse Comics, who okay. used to do oh, all these incredible good. Star Wars comics. Like they were, uh, they were a big source of joy in the expanded universe. Nice. Uh, and that was like Dark Horse taking the piss out of uh, what they had been doing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so back to the back to what really happened. Uh, <laughs> see, I is there a Leia and Han scene before the like before they plan the Death Star? Uh, not really. There's just the Dagobah scene. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what that's what I thought. Uh, so the Dagobah scene, we find out that yes, it it is kind of confirmation tying up that Lucid that we talked about uh last time with. Yeah. There's no reason why Luke would actually believe Vader, so he gets confirmation from yeah. Yoda, yes. Yeah. And then Obi-Wan gives him, like, from a certain point of view. The cop-out to end all cop-outs, oh my gosh. Uh, 
I get so annoyed when people like, yeah, because like with the Ruby Phantom and stuff like that, people are always saying, oh, well, maybe Summer Rose is dead. They've said she isn't. Well, maybe she is from a certain point of view. That only worked once. There was, yeah, and even that, then, no more. everyone knew it was a cop out. Yeah, yeah it didn't. It, it only worked once, but it didn't even really work that one time. Yeah, exactly. It's like even Never then, everyone worked. knew it was a cop out. Yeah, it didn't actually yeah. work at all. Yeah, it's yeah, like so... it was a cop out then. It only worked because it was George Lucas and Star Wars, and it didn't yeah. even really work. People so... just ex people forgave it. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, yeah, nobody liked it. They just forgave it. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, uh, Yoda gives Luke one more mission, like, you gotta confront Vader. Yeah. Which actually leads me to, like, something I like about this, and something I think the the newer movies are kind of doing well, too, is mm -hmm. hitting that, like, the true test of a Jedi isn't about fighting or negotiating, it's about confronting darkness and yeah. staying good. Yeah. And so yeah, that, confronting that's... the darkness within, yeah. And in Luke's yeah. case, this is, yeah, Darth yeah, Vader he's... is very much that darkness. Like as we saw in the cave, Darth Vader is a potential reflection of what yes. of the darkness within Luke that he has to confront here and deal with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Luke is confronting the darkness because he believes in a little thing called love, and is just listening to the rhythm of the heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna torture you guys with my singing, especially yeah, I was gonna say, especially any, especially the darkness. Think, I've tried that song at karaoke before; it did not go over well. I don't think that song could go well for almost anybody in karaoke, man. It's way too. Eh, no. Yeah, it's it's on like a whole other level of octaves. Yeah, what's uh, that song called again? Or uh, I believe in a thing called love by the darkness. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're like this '80s power metal band that didn't form gotcha. until 2000. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they missed they gotcha. missed their decade. Yeah, that's unfortunate. They also did a uh, oh, yeah. "Love Is More Than a Feeling." Take me away. That song. That was like plagiarism of like three other. Better it was songs. just generic. It was just generic. <laughs> I like it. I like it though. But, Fair uh, enough. But... <laughs> so within within this Dagobah scene, <coughs> um, Obi Wan drops another bomb on Luke's lap, and since then Mark Hamill has has since kind of come out to where like, yeah, I think Luke was just trying to find another thing, a bomb as big as "I am your father," and it just didn't work as well. Luke has yeah, a they're... twin sister. <laughs> And yeah. it's Leia. Which, yeah. Ooh. Which we kind of talked about this. Which we kind of talked about. Yeah, we which got, we kind of oh talked my. about this last week. But um, yeah, kind of that question of like, how long was Lucas planning on this? Because if he was planning on this when he was filming episode five, that's really weird. <laughs> like that. It's like only, that it's only it's weird. Just... It's only weird if you know it. I know, but it, it's, it's like it's, it's like Oedipus Rex. It only got weird after he found out that he was banging his mom. Yeah, but it is one of those things. But it's also just kind of weird to think that Lucas would have intentionally written like an incest, like yeah. the potential incest angle and stuff like that. That's I don't know that that just seems kind of weird. But it, but yeah, we find out that Leia is Luke's sister, which it's yeah. like it's I, I don't cool. I don't they, know they I, they do. They work with it. They do an okay job with it, but it did feel like really yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah, and uh, but then again, check out archive of our own. It's probably pretty popular there. No comment. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> twin cess. Uh Oh God, especially with Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls was the worst about that stuff. The fan fiction or the the fan fiction with Dipper. The fan fictions, plural, lots of them. Dipper oh, and Mabel. My. That, uh, yeah, yeah, fan, yes. yeah, fans are weird. In case you all didn't know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I just like the, uh, or, I don't know. Yeah, so I that like that, the, that, uh, take, that takes us to that they, sorry, yeah. Uh, 
I like the dorkly short that they did with that one where like Luke, Obi-Wan intentionally calls Lou to Dagobah to get him away from Leia because of that. He's just like, uh, you need to go to Dagobah now, now. I insist, insist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that from? It's from a dorkly short. They do a lot of shorts for uh, like video games and stuff like that. They do some for Star right. Wars and so. In this one, they have Obi-Wan's ghost popping up, like, when uh, Luke and Leia are making out. He's like, oh, no, um, you need to get to Dagobah, and stuff like that. That almost and sounds then, like a uh, um, how it should have ended joke. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, they're kind of parody. It's kind of a parody and stuff like that, yeah. Good. Star Wars is very popular for those kinds of things, but yeah. And I do also like the uh, how it should have ended for... Um, when they're planning the Death Star attack, and you just have all the rebel guys naming up all the problems with this plan, where oh, they're all yeah, like, yeah. like, where they're all like, wait a minute, wouldn't they know that this shuttle was missing and reported it? Wouldn't they like, you know, wouldn't they be planning since we got this information? Are we sure this isn't a trap? But but but, but Robert, the 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 both and spies. <laughs> no offense, lady, but all we rebel guys seem to do is die for some random cause. So for the A team over there. Yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah <laughs> well, they got plot armor. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. We we actually see Alpha. the rebel leader, Bon Mothma. I don't think she's ever called by name in this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah she no. yeah she is. Yeah, no, she isn't. Yeah, she is. She is. Yeah, yeah. She she's introduced. Uh, because the first guy, <laughs> the first guy who talks is the dude with like the gray beard or whatever. And he introduces Bon Mothma, who in turn introduces mm. uh the living meme himself, Admiral Akbar. Oh, Admiral! Never Admiral. heard of him. That guy's the <laughs> best. Yeah. Three this cruiser is not strong enough to grab hold fire of that magnitude. <laughs> yep. Uh, the animatronics. The, an the animatronics just. The animatronics just weren't there, quite there yet for him. <laughs> yeah, he definitely had that. He looked weird there. Dude, Akbar, Akbar is the shit. He was he, he's cool. he's supposed to be like our brilliant tactician, everyone. <laughs> the, this is why the Empire keeps winning. <laughs> Aww. I always think it's really funny that the Moncala are a, are a water people, and then they make really, really, really big fucking battle cruisers. I always <laughs> for being that. in the in space that. Hmm. Yeah, that is. I always weird. thought that was interesting. I mean, it's cool. I like the style of the ships that they build, but I just thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah, you do wonder how much of that ship is like dedicated to uh, like misting systems or whatever to keep their skin moist and stuff like that, so they don't. I don't know. Like, are they supposed to be like whales or like are they amphibious? I don't know. <laughs> it's a well, question. They're, they're... I don't know because there, there's the two species like on uh aquatic? on uh the Mon Calamari world, um, yeah. and one of them are very very much squid like, and the other one I think they're just fish. They they're just fish people with fish faces. Hmm. Yeah. And speaking of fish faces, that co-pilot that Lando picks up, what is his deal? He's speaking. Um. This movie's well, weird. Yeah, but like that's. <clears throat> but that's like a that was like an authentic African language. I uh, think that he was really? speaking. Yeah, like a <laughs> lot of people, like it, like this got really po popular in a certain region of Africa because of his uh, because he was speaking the language authentically. Look it up, but yeah, I think so. Well, I I know that he's a Celestian, uh, and I only know that because I yeah. play the video games. And Solist is kind of popular in the video games for some reason, even though it's supposed to be like this toxic waste dump. Hmm. Uh, and it's also mentioned in here that uh, the Rebels actually have like a massive force gathering on Solist to try to draw the Empire away, and the Empire just does not fall for it. Hmm. Like they, they end up like sending their fleet to Solist and then having them turn back around so that they can sandwich the rebel fleet between right, yeah. between the Death Star and the Yeah, they yeah, they asked yeah. the Emperor, um 
Yeah, I'm they asked the emperor, you know, what about this uh, fleet gathering on Solus? They're just like, don't worry about it. They will come to us. Yeah. The rebels will come to us. Yeah. The deflector shields will be quite guy. operational when your friends arrive. That's my You don't have to be I a dick love that. <laughs> yeah. Because you know that's like him laughing but, as he's talking. Pretty much. But yeah, we, yeah, can we talk about that? That the Emperor is amazing and Ian McDiarmid is incredible. Oh. Fucking he was legend. like what thirty? He was thirty when he made this. Wow, S something yeah. like that. It's he was not. He was not yeah, old. Man. He was not old. No, yeah, he he was he wasn't like twenty, but he wasn't old. I mean, he, he was wasn't like, even he wasn't even super duper old in 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 episode. Huh, no, one, I mean he's he's, he's only like se he's wow. only like I think he's like seventy now. He's seventy three yeah. right now. Yeah. And they had yeah, to so try he, to make he would he would have been like, like what he would have been like yeah. what uh fifty fifty something fifty nine <coughs> in um yeah yeah in, in Phantom Menace yeah he'd been in his fifties yeah he was yeah so so that would have put him at like kind of so so yeah he would have been in like his mid thirties when he was doing Return of yeah. the Jedi um but and yeah, they you... they gave they gave him a lot of makeup and. He mm -hmm. he acted all the way through that makeup, and I'm pretty sure that the Death Star has that huge chunk missing because Ian McDiarmid just chewed that much scenery on his way there. <laughs> like that's just all the all 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 the missing parts are just all the scenery yeah. that uh, Ian McDiarmid chewed through. Yeah, and you just love that. Like even before he turns up, everyone you get the sense that this is a horrifying person because yeah, yeah, that scene where Darth Vader is telling yeah, yeah, the first the first the first scene is actually Darth Vader arriving on Death Star Mach yeah, Two. It's like the Emperor is not just yeah. forgiving as I am, and you just yeah. see and you he... see you like you can almost see all the like Imperial officers that got choked out last film like playing through his eyes as he's just like yeah, what of our, just what of our others. He's yeah. a little. You see he's his little... pupils shrink and then just be like, "The emperor's coming." Like yeah. you're thinking, like, "Okay, this." Yeah, you know, like, "Okay, this is someone even more terrifying than Darth Vader," and that guy is horrifying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Dar Dar like... Darth Vader. Darth Vader has a leash. Very few people can hold that leash. Grand Moff Tarkin was one of them. The emperor is the one who made that leash. Yeah, yeah. It, and that's the thing is like he's. He he overacts a bit, but it's in the best way possible. Like I mean oh, that in the most is... complimentary way possible. He is a stage actor first and foremost. Yeah, very. But you do. So. I mean, I have seen professional stage plays like on Broadway, and you do have to overact a little bit yeah. more. I mean, there's overacting, yeah. overacting, but you do have to. I mean, to be louder, you have to show things more because yeah. people can't yeah. really see. So yeah, I've been there. I've been the on kind of suit. That. Yeah. So yeah, this role, expensive. like the way he does it, it just it's so perfect. The way he's like he's it's a little bit over the top, but it works. I he really is very like theatrical, it. and it is he's not theatrical to the point where it's. Enjoy. I don't think it's theatrical to the point where it's campy. I think it's theatrical to the point no, where it does actually it's, make it's... him more intimidating and yeah. more grand in a way. Like he's yeah. he almost yeah. feels like he's more grand than he is like he's an emperor unadulterated evil actually i think because he in this, kind of thinks more like he's more manipulative in like a grand master emperor kind of thing than he is just like the most evil thing that ever existed yeah you know? um george lucas likened him to a puppet master he likened him to uh faust to the to uh mephistopheles and the faust narrative uh mm -hmm. especially in Re revenge of the sith like the whole, like the whole christening of Darth yeah. Vader, George Lucas ripped that straight from Faust. Um, but the thing is, and you gotta kind of remember that movie acting is still fairly new. Like not not so much yeah, as new as TV. TV TV period. acting would be like the newest thing, but movie acting yeah. is very different from any other kind of acting. Uh, TV yeah. acting is kind of like uh, diet movie acting, and then. But yeah. everything else, this like a... like in Ian McDermott, is not a movie star. He is not a movie actor. He comes from the Shakespeare Theater in London. He is more qualified to choose scenery than anyone else in his generation. Yeah, yeah, and he, yeah, because it, it wasn't like... wasn't he like freaking uh, Macbeth at at one point in London so. or something, yeah. something like like he's done a lot yeah. of Shakespeare plays. He's done a this lot is... of like Faustian stuff. Yeah. 
this is not long after like yeah in terms of like movie acting and stuff like that this is not long after uh you had these scenes where people were getting shot and like taking forever to die and stuff like that like throwing their arms in the air just oh uh, uh, you know Be- because like they, they had to they had to like overact the stuff like that because yeah you know the to people the no- the, well the people the nosebleed seeds need to be able to see it yeah and also in, Espe- especially in the time before cameras about, like, in movies but yeah yeah uh, but that that's that's really that's very much the school of thought that uh, Ian McDermott comes from, and a lot of actors of Star Wars. Like George Lucas, really likes his uh, theater actors. Like uh, I know Peter Cushing, who is much more of a movie actor than Ian McDermott, but Peter Cushing yeah. did a lot of stage stuff as well, and so did Christopher Lee. But Christopher Lee did and like freaking everything. Was... Christopher Lee did everything from movies to theater to death metal to literally hunting Nazis. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was a spy. Yeah, he was a spy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Ian McDiarmid is a freaking treasure, and he is the best part of this movie. He's the best part of Revenge of the Sith. Uh, oh, great, yeah. He is just, yeah, he is amazing. <laughs> and he is, he is loving every minute of playing the master of all evil, the Star oh, Wars equivalent tell, yeah. to, the je- to the devil. Do yeah, it. pretty much. Strike him oh, and by down. The way, it was, take uh... your father. Strike me down and take your father's place. Uh oh, no! Strike me down in your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Yeah, yeah he's he has fun with it, man. It works though. It's it's yeah. it's a hell of a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Kill by him. the way, it was a Kenyan di- dialect. Kenyan that the oh. uh, one guy was speaking. Nice. Hmm. Uh, but before that, uh. A lot of the really good stuff with the Emperor happens. Uh, we got uh, we spend a lot of time on Endor before the battle actually starts. Uh, the uh, the Rebel A team lands, um, with a uh, and they quickly encounter the natives. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, the native and and they they do the whole like uh. God thing with C three PO and it's kind of annoying and so, so I don't I don't actually have a problem with the Ewoks the Ewoks are pretty cool I do know I do realize that they existed a lot more for merchandising purposes and that they were basically giant teddy bears uh you got you guys are kind of lagging there a bit so are you. Yeah. Yeah, uh yeah, my my video my connection just went into the yellow there for a minute. Not it it didn't go red, so it didn't drop, but okay. yeah. So were were you trying to say but, anything while I talk about the giant teddy bears? No. Oh, yeah. So, this is, I'll I'll talk about this in a second, but you can see your piece. <laughs> uh, uh just that they existed more for merchandising purposes, but they at least pulled their own weight. Like uh like a lot of their traps and stuff, actually did work. The I don't buy the whole stormtroopers being weak to rocks thing or wooden spears, but you know, like dropping the rocks from the like hang gliders, <coughs> the logs, like uh, yeah. they they really smashed. Um, uh, they really smashed like a giant like contraption thing with a couple with a pair of logs. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that that whole nutshell. But before then, and I so someone posted this on Facebook a long time ago. I saw this on Facebook a few years ago. But the whole thing with like uh, the Ewoks were apparently clever enough to capture the Rebel A team. So, and they were about to cook them and eat them. Yeah, like I get that they're supposed to be clever, and I so okay. This is the rant that I talked about earlier. But so let me be clear. I like the idea of a like technologically inferior native uh, species or race being able to beat the empire. I think that's a really nice touch. I think that's like a better allegory for Vietnam than aliens was. So I think that's a, <laughs> I think that's a, I, th- I think that's a good idea. I think that was a clever idea. My, 
Er, and I'm even, er, so my issue with the Ewoks is kind of two things. The first one is it could have been Wookiees. And I think that would have been a lot more interesting. I would have been able to buy a Wookiee like shoving a spear through a stormtrooper's armor because these guys rip people's arms off for a living. Like when they get angry and stuff like that. I can believe that. I think it would have been a lot cooler. You have that scene where the Ewoks all come out of hiding and fi start firing arrows. How much cooler would that have been a bunch of Wookiees with these big long bows firing at Wookiees? So I get that they were being funny. And to be fair, like this was funny. I laughed. But personally, I guess I just think that if you got if you have the choice between funny and badass, I would go with badass in this case. Or I would have gone with badass in this case. And my second issue is that something we've been talking about for the last two weeks is that the Empire is this very powerful force. They've pretty much been in control this entire time. What happened to the Death Star was essentially a fluke in a way. And they have been like this very powerful figure. And these are supposed to be an, a legion of the Emperor's best troops. This is like the 501st, I think. And so, like, this is a very powerful army. They're supposed to be, um, you know, they're supposed to be the best of the, that the Empire has to offer. And they're getting taken out by tiny teddy bears. And I think that this is where people started to look at the Empire and say, does that armor actually what do a, anything? Yeah, what a joke. Yeah, exactly. This is kind of, I think this is kind of where the Empire becomes a joke. This is where people forget that the Empire let the Millennium Falcon go. This is where they forget that the Battle of Hoth was a desperate stall to get the Rebels out of there. It was not a real bat. Like, it wasn't even a real battle. It was an ass-kicking. And, like, and, uh, and you can... And people look at the freighter-sized hole leading to the main reactor in the new Death Star, and they think that was, and they look at it and they think it was, um, you know, sheer stupidity instead of like instead of either hubris or a or part of the trap to you know sweeten the bait and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was it was a so, diversion tactic because uh, yeah. I think, and, uh, I can't remember if it's actually stated in the movie, but, like, all the the chunk that's missing out of the Death Star, none of that leads anywhere. Like, yeah, it's just exactly. all a bunch of close-off hallways that would have just yeah, been more like, office, yeah, more this office space Yeah, like, and four stuff. times bigger than the old one, and that's because all it really needed to do was fire the laser to finish off the Rebellion. And so, I think because of the Ewoks, like, this is where the Empire kind of being a joke started this is where casual fans started feeling like you know they weren't all that impressive and they were all like casual fans were always going to eventually feel that way and stuff like that people were always going to make jokes about that but i feel like the ewoks are where it began i feel like the ewoks kind of expedited that process so i don't know i feel like yeah this that, that's wasn't and the that's time and that's why funny. yeah and that's why a lot of the people draw the line at the ewoks I think yeah. that's the problem with the Ewoks is that just that was when they took it a little too far. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So I think so yeah, my issue with the Ewoks is that I think Wookiees would have been a whole lot cooler and a lot Which I think yeah, I think that was uh, I think that was in the original Yeah, I think th which I think yeah. was the original plan. And second of all that yeah, the Ewoks kind of made the empire look like a joke. So those I, are I mean, that's my issue with them. Yeah, Espe I think especially a few things that uh, especially since this is, uh, according to the Emperor, his most elite force. Yeah, exactly. Okay, there's, so there's a few things that I think slightly counterbalance this, and I'm kind of just playing devil's advocate to play devil's advocate, but I Go also it. kind of... Because I do kind of agree that the Ewoks are a little too much. They're a little too cutesy. They're a little too silly. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it is at least... I think it would have been more believable if their suits weren't so clumsy because the fact that a small person can defeat the empire is not dis is not unbelievable the no, fact yeah. the fact that because they're very clearly a warrior people of some kind there's obviously some other force or more than one force on uh 
on that moon that they're also fighting against, obviously. So they're, it's not as if they don't know how to fight. And there are, and I do find it sort of believable that, you know, they're able to create a lot of things that the Empire is not, and I think that part of it is believable. Yeah. I mean, the fact that a bunch of logs trips up an, a walker, that actually does make sense. Like, yeah, no. That kind yeah. of makes fun of a walker's yeah, kind any, of stupid design, any, right? Anything they do with the yeah, logs yeah. makes sense. Because yeah, logs are heavy. The, like, slamming many... the two logs together. Yeah, it's a very tree-covered area, so it's easy to swing yeah, two. Yeah, when really it comes heavy. down to, like, it's traps true. and just outsmarting them, I buy that. I think that's great. But it is true. I do not believe for a second that... And yeah, it is partly, like, the costuming and, like, the suits that they're wearing. I do... Like, it does not, like, just the weak way that they're swinging these weapons does not look like they're actually going to hurt anyone. Exactly. That's the thing that bothers yeah. me. And and I actually also buy, when they just, when they're standing or flying and they drop rocks on them, I didn't believe that when I was a kid, but I actually believe that more now because you realize as you get older that the, Empire, the, the Stormtrooper armor it actually isn't really all that strong. So that actually right. would hurt, like, fucking crazy, actually. And that would easily knock you out or even kill you. A decent sized rock from that from from several from twenty thirty feet up, that That's could fair. yeah yeah that would hurt you like fucking crazy. Yeah, I think the la the dumbest thing is like yeah when they just like go and attack them and start hitting them with sticks and like that's supposed to yeah. do. Something. And I don't and I buy that those they, arrows did anything you know, either. Those things were skinny and, and weak. Now, yeah, how would the arrows have done anything either? That's another issue I take. Yeah. So there's some things I do, and and the fact Chewbacca was able to commandeer the um the uh, I I love that uh, the ATST. ATST. I I love that the ATST. Yeah. I did think that was like, funny. Yeah, but... you're you're, you're breaking up. That you're... And it's also believable that they're. Yeah, you, you broke. It? Yeah, you broke up there. Uh, it's che also Chewy believable yeah. that that he's able to do so much with it because if one thing that always bugs me in video games is when you commandeer an enemy ship, they automatically know that it's you and they start firing at you. Whereas yeah. in this, it's actually done properly. Like they don't know who's in there. So the empire yeah. is not going to start shooting at him. Yeah. And it does make sense so... that like Chewbacca would be, <laughs> yeah. like Chewbacca and it also is has a the pilot it for also the Millennium Falcon. The... So I believe that he can pilot. I thought that yeah. Was... Oh yeah. yeah. And it also has yeah. the reverse That's, effect. Yeah. I have no problem with any of that. Yeah. We talked, yeah. Yeah. Also, has the reverse effect at the very end when he's like they, rolling up to Han, and Han's just like, "Oh no." Uh, can, can you guys still hear me? You froze there, media. Now you froze uh, for a second. Yeah. Well, you you guys didn't. Uh, basically, I I all I said was uh, when she was rolling up to Han in the ATST, and it's just like, oh well, here we go. And I think yeah. another thing that helps believably is, that helps believability for me at least, is the fact that once the Ewoks show up, at least they're a distraction, so it does get the other rebel troops free to Yeah, yeah, because well. there, there are, there and are other rebel soldiers. And that's supposed to be a formidable fight, which, yeah. spoiler, one of them is, is supposed to be Captain Rex. I don't I believe that totally for a believe. I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe I, he, I, I, I don't I believe totally he, I don't, that. I don't believe he'd still be alive. Like the one, in, like the one with the big because, white beard. That yeah, one, yeah, the yeah, beard. yeah, yeah, yeah. They said that I the do, most recent I Disney. At the very Expo. least, I do believe that Dave Filoni gave Captain Rex a white beard in Star Wars <laughs> for exactly that reason, though. That, at the very least, I do believe. Unless, that. unless he found a way, unless he found a way to stop least, aging. I yeah, do believe that, that at least Dave really Filoni was fucking. Filoni was fucking with people at the very least. I do, believe that. but anyway, <laughs> yeah, that makes fine. it more believable as well that at least they free the rebel force to fight as well. Yeah, and I like I like the ambush and how it's set up. Well. Yeah, I like yeah. The, I like the ambush and how it's set up because they like they obviously kind of plan around the fact that this could be a trap. Luke up and leaves. Like the only one he even tells is Leia. He up and leaves yeah. to resolve his Jedi issues. Yeah. Um, and to get Vader out of there because if he walked in there, yeah, it would have been yeah. a bloodbath. It yeah, it would have it would have been like that scene in Rogue One, but like for twenty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty minutes of Darth Vader hacking and slashing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, he, he had to deal with that. They they go in there, they get ready to like set the charges and stuff. A bunch of Imperial officers come out and like surround them, 
take them out. Turns out they see the entire like 501st Ling Jin. It's supposed to be the 501st anyway. Yeah. Uh, just standing yeah. there. All the rebels have like their hands up and stuff. Uh, and then yeah. as they're like cuffing all the rebels and stuff, the Ewoks just pop out of nowhere and just start like shanking and throwing rocks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I didn't really buy it, because it was like, just kick them. Probably punt them into the trees. But, yeah, but also One. a fun... Yeah, but also a fun little... Or just a fun little bit of trivia there is that um, the one guy that, that Han throws, like, the charge at or whatever and knocks him into uh, the pit or whatever and he screams, that guy is the guy who made the will... Like, who... Uh, did the original Wilhelm scream? Which yeah, that that that, that is that is Wilhelm himself. Yep, that is Wilhelm himself. So that was funny. That's a fun yeah. little bit of trivia. That yeah. is, yeah. Uh, know, uh, quick, just... quick thing here. It says I'm disconnected. Can you guys still hear me? Oh yeah, I'm hearing you. Okay, it it, it might kick me uh, if it if it doesn't refresh. Um, okay. So then, yeah, I think that there's some really good intense stuff in this scene, in the sequence, uh, I really like, feel the scene where, uh, one of the Ewoks doesn't make it. Yeah. Like, they get, like, the two Ewoks yeah, get splashed, actually... and one of them just doesn't get up, and the other one's just, like, yeah, pushing his buddy, trying to get him up. And just, like, and just yeah. and... you feel the might of the Empire for a few seconds there. Yeah, I mean, even if you yeah, hate it feels Ewoks, like you can't really deny that that was actually pretty well done. That is true, and it does feel and... like they tried to make it feel like the Ewoks were fighting a battle there, and that it wasn't really until like Chewbacca commandeered the ATST, and they um, and like the Walkers walked into heh, pun into like <laughs> a few of the traps that worked that. Uh, that they really start winning, like that. I d that was pretty well done and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and it and it speaks it it's tried. it speaks magnitudes of George Lucas's ability to shoot a film. When I feel more for that Ewok and his dead friend than I do half the crew of Rogue One. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, is there anything else we need to talk about before we talk about the most important scene that I already have like half a video dedicated to? Uh, yeah, space battle. Oh yeah, the, spa the space the space battle. battle. Oh, the, the spa yeah, it's the space trap. battle. Dope. It, it it's a trap. <laughs> you got uh, you actually got fleet on fleet combat. This is the first time that we had fleet on fleet combat. Uh, the Death Star yeah. is like picking off. I like that. Is like picking off ships every like couple minutes. Um, yeah. They have to like take down. They they're trying to the rebels are trying to like actually break through the blockade and try to like get out of there while Han's well well not Han. Lando is trying to do like a De Death Star Trench Run 2.0 and just taking the smaller ships and being like, yeah. we got to get to that reactor core like yesterday. Let's just do yeah. it like we did with the first Death Star and let the capital ships like hold off all these TIE fighters and stuff. Like yeah, let the fleet hold off all the TIE fighters stuff and try to push through those because even after this Death Star is destroyed, we're still going to have to deal with that fleet. Yeah. And, and I like that. And I love that visual. This was like, yeah, one of the earliest visuals that I remember watching um, of the Super Star Destroyer cra getting blown up and crashing into the surface of the Death Star. After the and freaking Kamikaze this, pilot, like, freaking nailed it yeah, right in the nails bridge. the bridge. Like, he knew he yeah. was going down. He's like, I'm going down, and I'm taking this pair with me. Yeah, exactly. And, and just crashes and in. This was, <laughs> and the and, yeah, and the and then, guards are like, "Somebody shoot that thing out of the sky! It's coming right for us! Put out the deflector shields! It's it's too late!" And they try diving out of the way like that's gonna do any good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, and that was a, yeah. I thought like the space battle was great because that's the fight where you feel, um. Like I feel like that's the fight where you really feel the intensity and the desperation of like you know, yeah, and like the fat and Lou like Lando talking um Akbar into like you know we have to give them more time. We're not going to get another shot we at this. Have to we... more time. Yeah, exactly. And this was very much a battle where it's very much a do or die fight, and so I thought that was, and it very much feels that way. And then the Death Star starts firing on them, and you just go oh. Yeah, our deflector shields can't re reflect a 
blast yeah. of that magnitude or whatever jo- literal- or whatever uh, sci-fi mumbo jumbo George Lucas put in that line. Yeah, and they're literally between a rock and a hard place. There, where, like, where like going and attacking the star destroyers at point blank range is a be- is the only option they have. It's yeah, like, yeah, oh. it's a better option than dealing with the Death Star. Yeah, exactly. Like that's how powerful. It is. And they have to engage it so it won't risk firing on their own ships. Hopefully. Yeah, it also gets pretty yeah. tense. Like, not quite as tense as. The original trench run, just because it, it, it's not as cluster, uh, it's not as well edited, I think, or may, maybe it's because we already had the Death Star trench run before then, and so it's like, oh, yeah. this is just you're all right. Death Star trench run two point oh, because yeah, it, it really is it is more cluster going movement. on to cut back and forth between that that yeah. that too, which um uh, I have a point for that where there there's three climaxes going on at the same time, which. Sounds like cool. which, I still which sound, this film yeah, for that reason. Which sounds like a fun yeah. Friday night, but it, they are three <laughs> very different scenes. <laughs> nice. I am on fire today with those jokes. <laughs> In your windows, you've got them. Uh, but yeah, we, yeah, you got the stuff on Endor, above Endor, and on the Death Star. The Death Star. Uh, yeah, uh, got Admiral. I you got Admiral. actually overall well balanced, personally. Well, I and and again, really ju- just like it was, just like uh, last time, it's all focused on indoor, and it's all focused on the Death Star. It's Luke is in the Death Star. Yeah. Lando has to destroy the Death Star, but before he can destroy the Death Star, Han has to destroy, Han the, has shield, to destroy the shield, yeah. which is on indoor, which is on the Force Moon of indoor. Or uh, the or uh, the California Redwood Planet. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's where they filmed it. Uh. Yeah. But yeah and it, and it gets well really tense, especially like the last scene, like before, like at, they blow it up. Lando Wedge just start booking it out of there. The fire from the explosions, like engulfing Tie Fighters. Uh, and then you yeah. see like the cockpit view, and you see the flames like creeping up around, and then. It cuts to the shot of it just zipping out with the explosion like around it and behind oh, it, yeah. and then Lando just goes like, Yee-haw! "Yep." Yeah, that <laughs> and then, and then the celestial is like, "Oh, oh, 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 oh. the end of yeah, yeah." And then, you can't, you and then can't everybody not love just that moments like that. Like they do get that shit like so fucking perfect. Yeah, definitely. Is that that was yeah. Yeah, Lando. Or oh man, I'm sorry, I'm spacing on dope. the actor's name. But yeah, Lando. Billy D. Is Williams. Billy D. Williams. <laughs> Billy D. Williams. And his glorious mustache. Yeah, Billy D. Williams and his glorious mustache are just fantastic in that battle. Yeah. Speaking of Billy D. Williams, just because we might not ever get a chance to say this, but uh, I really love that Lego Batman movie. Had him play Two Face. <laughs> yes. So just completely really off bad, topic, yeah. but I have no idea no, how I'm gonna was, squeeze no, that was, into yeah, a it was podcast. Yeah, Can I just put it real quick. Lego Batman movie was fucking hilarious, and it's oh, the it first good. movie that I can think of that actually has an extremely overt Calvin and Hobbes reference. And I had to pause the movie. I was laughing so hard. It has a lot of. And that was it. When was the Calvin and Hobbes reference? Hobbes reference, because there's no reason for it. You're 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 cutting out, dude, or maybe I am. No, I guess it's dude. Is that are you? Because you're still coming in fine, Robert. Yeah. Uh, I'm not here in a meeting, but villains with big plans to destroy the world and stuff like that. And Calvin, it's like, why why don't they ever just go after more subtle, realistic bad guys? And then Calvin goes, Yeah, the, like they could write. They could write letters to the editor and stuff instead. And then Calvin goes, <laughs> I think I see the problem. And then Hobbes goes, quick, to the bat facts. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, and so they made a joke in there where yeah. there's a bat fax? They actually gave me a bat fax. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's in Batman's, like, like, like mask or something like that. And but but like, yeah, the, the Billy D. Williams as Two-Face thing, 
is so hilarious because well, he played Har- great. He, great. he played Harvey Dent in the 1989 film. Yeah. And the yeah. only reason why he signed yeah. up for it was because Tim Burton promised he him that like yeah. you'll get to play Two Face if you're Harvey Dent. But then Tim Burton left uh, the entire franchise, uh, at, or at least as director, he was still producer, I think. Uh, after Batman Returns, like the studio booted him because he wasn't kid friendly enough, and Joel Schumacher cast uh, Tommy Lee Jones instead, and Billy D. Williams' career never recovered. Aw, that is a shame. And yeah, so yeah, but that then was you got a to nice little to play Two Face homage to him. Yeah, you finally got to play Two Face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Billy yeah. D. Williams is fantastic. No, he's, cool, he's, coolest I'm brother so of the galaxy. Actually, yeah. I, I'm the so only glad they, brother of the galaxy. No. <laughs> I'm so Whoa. glad they brought him. Like I'm so, I'm so glad they kept him in this movie too, instead of just having him in Empire. I thought that was great because he's yeah. just fun. I don't know what it is. He's just. He's, well, I mean, it, it's it's continuing his redemption thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. And yeah, we get exactly to see, is. and we get to see how he pilots the Falcon. Yep. He might actually a bit better at it than Han. Yeah, Han got a lot of help from Chewie, and I love that in Empire that Maybe like a little less... that like Lando like super respects Chewie, but he gives Han a bunch of crap. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, I think maybe it's the I don't know. I think Lando's maybe a little more cautious than Han, and that's what it is. Is that Han's more us but yeah yeah never tell me the odds uh and so i think i think falls, yeah I, I think that yeah i think that's the best time to start getting into a lot of the thematic depth of the luke yeah. vader emperor scene because that scene yeah. is yeah. dense i already talked about it in a video previously the very first mis i ever made uh, where I talked about the the kind of storytelling trope of into the underworld, where the hero goes into the per, behind enemy lines in order to save something. In this case, Luke goes to the Death Star to save his father's soul, and they have a lot of great dialogue. Darth Vader's like, "That name means nothing to me now. Like it's the name of it's your name though. It's the name of my father, the." Man, you left yeah. behind, and there's st- and he's still in there. That you were once Anakin Sky, yeah. That you were once Anakin Skywalker, my father. Yeah. And yeah, it's this very, yeah, it's this very good like tug of war, basically of with Luke the with the emperor with the emperor soul. just pull the strings. Yeah, the Emperor tr- manipulating Luke and stuff like that, and a little yeah. too a little too much. He he overplays his hand, and that ends up being his downfall. Which, yep, that was done on exactly purpose what... because remember what Luke said: your overconfidence will be your downfall. Yeah, your yep. overconfidence exactly. is your downfall. That was prophetic yep. because that's exactly what happened. I don't want to hear anybody complaining about that scene. Yeah, that was also, really though, good. Also, also, anybody who complains about Mark Hamill, that scene. Yeah, that's oh god, he's up. he's good. He's, he's so fantastic. Because Mark is... Hamill is so fantastic in that scene. He is. I will really not good, yeah. like. He's trying to be all measured and stuff, and like I will not fight you. Uh, even though he swung first, he was ready to cut the emperor in freaking half. Oh yeah, yeah. that's definitely true. It's like I'll fight him, but I do not want to fight you, Dad. And yeah, you can't tell which one of them drew first because. Luke draws his lightsaber, and then you see that Darth Vader all... Yeah, he grabs it, turns it on, then it goes to Darth Vader. He's already got his out, so you can't tell who drew first. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah they... and, 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 as, and as they say, I see your Schwartz and, is as and, big and as they, And they, like, cla- <laughs> and they clash over the Emperor's chest, and uh, and then we're just like, ha, 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 With his freaking cackle. Uh, yeah. and they're finally like Luke gets the high ground and Darth Vader's like not this time <laughs> he throws his <laughs> lightsaber yeah and like you can tell that Darth Vader you can kind of tell that yeah Luke is like even though he's kind of given into his anger he's at the same time trying to reel it back in and stuff like that like he gets the upper hand on Vader at one point and he's kind of like he doesn't give into anger at all until Vader brings up Leia yeah, until he brings his yeah, until he brings his sister into it, and then it's like, and in yeah. that case, you could very much argue that it's very much righteous anger. 
stuff like that, that is like, okay, you went there. It's not just about you anymore. It's about my sister. Like, like because right before that, Luke is actually hiding under the staircase, I guess. Yeah, he's and he's hiding. and he's got like just the, the like half, Harry half, Potter, half, <laughs> half half shadow, half light, as Vader is yeah. taunting him, like, so you have a twin. All right, so uh, uh, so uh, I, I'm recording now. Uh, at the beginning of this podcast, um, if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, I already explained what happened. Uh, the footage was basically unusable. The audio was good, but uh, it also cut out an hour and a half. So we're just gonna pick up where we left off from there, uh, which we were talking about uh, Vader versus uh, the Emperor and Vader. Um, or Luke's and Luke's that whole dealio. The whole most important scene. Yeah, thing? yeah, the mo yeah the most yeah. important scene, which I already have a video on. Yeah. Yep. yeah, which we didn't talk too much about it the first time because you already have a video about it. Yes, so. yes. Um, yep. I mean, the important things are, the important thing is, they're making a lot of noise up there. Uh, the important thing Hamill's is, Mark Hamill's acting is really Yes, really Mark Hamill's acting, people. Ian McDiarmid chewing up half of the freaking Death Star, that's why it looks that way. Uh, <laughs> yep. And like, I, I love the whole symbolism with uh, him after he beats the crap out of Vader and cuts off his hand. Uh, he sees Vader's mechanical hand. He looks at his own mechanical hand. And then the Emperor just refuses to shut his mouth and just laughs and blows it. Blows everything. Like, if the Emperor did not laugh, uh, Luke probably would have turned to the dark side. He probably would have finished the job. Yes, that was the thing. Yeah, it is exactly what Luke yeah. said. Your moment of, moment, of, cla is moment your of clarity. Which is exactly yeah, uh, what Luke said. <laughs> Yeah, that hubris will be your downfall. Is ultimately what brought him down. Yep. Yeah, and it was yep. just that moment. Yeah, so start, he started celebrating just way too soon. Yep. Good. Good. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, that there's also that beautiful, um, like transition shot where it shows like the Emperor shocking Luke. Cuts to Vader, cuts to Luke, cuts to Vader, cuts to the Emperor, like, goes back and forth from there. And, yeah. And we've said this on the previous two podcasts, and I'm sure we've said it on this podcast already. Uh, just, oh my god, how do they make Vader emote so much? Yeah. Yeah, they're really good about with that. No was... With no dialogue, just the camera shots and the, the kind of physical yeah. acting on David Prowse's part. Oh my yeah, god, like... Great. That scene did not need the no that they ended up putting in on the Blu-ray release. No, it did not, no. The music that they had in the original was amazing. It did a great job of adding to it. They did not need the no. But yeah, and I, again, like I haven't had a chance to listen back to all the audio that we've gotten so far, the hour 20-something minutes that we have so far. But uh, yeah. it, 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 bears, it bears repeating... That uh, this was this was the first kind of like lightsaber duel that had its own musical score because in the previous yep. lightsaber duels, um, Lucas thought like, hey, they the lightsaber the sound of lightsabers is kind of its own score; it doesn't need any musical accompaniment. But by the time of Return of the Jedi, that whole novelty had kind of worn out. So like, hey, yeah, we gotta do something new. Yeah. So John Williams created this really haunting. Uh, almost like Gregorian chant score, uh, musical yep. accompaniment for this entire sequence. Yeah, except for I don't think it's Gregorian chant because yeah. I believe it. At least to me, it sounds like there are harmonies going on and Gregorian chant. Yeah, I don't. Right. I'm not a music yeah. guy. I'm, I I actually did study <laughs> yeah. Gregorian chant. Gregorian chant has no harmony whatsoever. So even if there's okay. multiple singers, they're all singing the exact same note. Gotcha. That's an important part of Gregorian chant. So, but I get what you're saying. It does kind of. Yeah. Trying to cut out there for a second, dude. Well, uh... Oh. <laughs> oh, so... Technical difficulties no matter where we yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we have that... But yeah, we have that very powerful moment of like... Yeah, where Darth Vader turns on the Emperor. And then we have that... The unmasking, which is... 
like again we've talked about just how human darth vader has been slowly becoming throughout this and then we get to see his face and it's torn up but he does not look uh, yeah, like he he says like i want to look at you with my own eyes yeah and he does not look and yeah he takes off the mask and it's rod and it's robert shaw underneath there and which i does... i know i know david cross was pissed about yeah but uh... <laughs> even though R robert shaw is a great actor he's mostly known for jaws but yeah. jaws does not do him justice i remember saying that yeah he was the best part of Jaws, in my opinion, but yeah, he's he's done a lot of really great work. and But yeah, he just, in that moment, does not look at all like this, mo like what you would expect this monstrous figure from the last two movies to look like and stuff like that, so. And yeah, it just has that very tender moment where, <laughs> kind of has that moment of, you get the feeling like realization of oh crap i had a daughter as well and kind of tells luke to you know tell your sister that you were right and yeah which is pretty fitting considering that if they like i don't know of all the people he's wronged he's definitely wronged leia a lot so wanting to yeah, try and reach out for her to it. her in his final moments is also pretty pretty i fitting. love the is it, is it how it should have ended that did the I have a I have a daughter I have twins wait yeah, a yeah, minute all, yeah. yeah and he gets all excited yeah you said they died in childbirth they she died of Lost. a broken heart, heart? you bastard <laughs> that's why you're talking to me yep yep yeah yeah that was. It was just a nice ending, and even like, I don't know, it's one of those things, those really well done things. Like, if you told people in, um, like back when episode four came out, if you had told people, you know, hey, in a couple episodes they're gonna hold a funeral for Darth Vader, and it's actually gonna be a truly tender moment. Like, I doubt anyone would have bought it, but it was. It was just a gore a beautiful moment. But yeah. That scene with Darth Vader's pyre, funeral pyre, but yeah. Yeah, it's because of everything they did in that last scene and, and how good of a job the, uh, the, the, what is it, the, uh, I guess that's the third actor at that time to play Darth Vader. Yeah. The guy, the yeah, stage yeah, actor. Yeah, Ro Robert, Robert Shaw. They got, or, uh, there was David Prowse who did all the body work, James Earl Jones who did the voice, and then Robert Shaw who did the face Robert Shaw, there in uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. I think we counted up. There's yeah. like, there's like, how many people have portrayed Anakin's? Like, those three plus yeah, Jake Lloyd, uh, yeah, and Hayden plus Christensen, Hayden Christensen like plus five or six people no, or something, plus uh, Matt Lanter. Matt Lanter's yeah. uh, Clone Wars Anakin is canon. Okay. Yeah, and if Matt Lanter also yeah. portrayed him in, uh, I don't know who portrayed him in Rebels. I think that was uh, James Earl Jones. I think he voiced him in Rebels. Well, then, but. He uh, well, the mask came off at some point, so I'm trying to remember if they got if Matt Lanter ever did it again. Uh, either way, yeah, Anakin Skywalker in canon at this point. It's like six now, I think at least. Yeah, but yeah, and I think a big part of that, like, is just the fact that they've. This is an example of like a redemption story done well because a lot of time I don't know. I recently made a rant where I talked about how. A lot of redemption stories feel like they try to get it all in in like one episode of a show or like even post mortem for a character trying to say, Oh, you thought this character was a huge prick? No, he was actually really nice. I'm like the specific example I'm thinking right now is Itachi from um, Naruto. But like, this is a really good example of a redemption arc done right because we start to see Darth Vader's humanity all the way back in episode five and it just grows from there. Oh, um, by the way, fact check. Um, I was just looking up images and stuff. It's actually Sebastian Shaw who plays Vader, not Robert okay. Shaw. I don't think I don't think there's any relation other than the fact that they're, uh, um, you know, Sebastian Shaw is only like ten years older, I believe. Um, yeah, and they were like around. The same period. 
and they both have the last name Shaw. So, yeah, goof, goof on my part. Oops. But he did a great job. He did a yeah. Sebastian Shaw did a also, great job. Also, also doesn't help that if you look up Sebastian Shaw, the freaking X Men villain pops up as the first. Uh, uh, it does. Yep. Yeah. That's true. That's what happened. <laughs> that is exactly. I just did it. Yeah, I'm just like Kevin Bacon. What's he doing? Bacon, <laughs> Bacon number zero confirmed. It does exist. Yeah. Uh, so did, did we talk about how how awesome the death is in space? At how how awesome the what? The Starfighter fight is. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because that would that would have been earlier. And did we cover the? We covered all the Ewok stuff. Didn't yeah, we? yeah, yeah. We covered yeah, all. Of yeah, that, that, that was yeah, right. okay. As well, all right. That's some some. It's been a while now. It's been a week now, so I forget. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Lando going yee-haw! at the end. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Which is dope. Yeah. Uh, and then, I guess that kind of takes us to the conclusion where they're all partying it up on indoor. Yeah. Which, I feel like the, um, I don't know. I felt like the special edition, some of the places that, like, I don't know. I feel like showing the galaxy wide celebrations. I don't know. In some of these places, first of all, in some of these places, like it felt like they might not be the places that would be celebrating all that much. And second of all, it felt like a really premature celebration because the empire is still out there and stuff. So yeah, that yeah, that that is something that the special edition added in. In the original, uh, just shows the partying on indoor, uh, and I think maybe Yavin. Uh, for some reason, I remember Yavin being on the VHS tape. Yavin or Bespin? It might have been Bespin. And, and Yavin might just be me mistaking y- me mistaking the English forest for the Redwood Forest. <laughs> You're talking about the yeah. celebration part? Yeah. 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 No, the celebration not indoor, I get. But yeah, and, and I even... I even wide. Actually, the one, that makes, the one that makes the least sense is Naboo. It's Coruscant. As in Coruscant. Well, Coruscant, you know, whatever. The, the, there's well, a, there's always a, there's always a party going on in Coruscant. Doesn't mean they like. Uh, that's true. Doesn't mean they actually like being controlled by the Empire. There, there might actually have been a lot. Yeah, of and I mean, there, there's probably because it's where know, the government is. There might have been a lot more control there than they would have wanted. So that can make sense. The, well, there's probably going to be a celebration on Coruscant, regardless of who won. True. Because it's just it's a. A planet-wide city. Surely, like, sh- surely, there's a good number of rebel and imperial sympathizers within the planet. But uh, the main point of showing Coruscant in the special edition was to give, like, hey, this is a uh, that and Naboo were like, hey, these are two planets that are going to be in the upcoming Phantom Menace. Because that, because that movie was like getting ready to come out. So that was like the first glimpse of the Phantom Menace that we got. Yeah. Little uh, teaser that eh. Uh, other special edition stuff. Um, I think Return of the Jedi has the most that has changed since the special edition. Like uh, the Darth Vader saying no, that was in the Blu-ray release. Same thing with the yeah. They they changed the Ewoks' eyes. They like digitally redid them to where they're actually like looking around and not just looking dead eyed all the time. Hmm. And they also changed up that, like, added in a dance number in. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. That, yeah, that was that was in the that was in the special edition. That was in the original special yeah. edition. Yeah, which saying which, original special that was edition a really weird so looking CGI. Not gonna lie, yeah, CGI some bad CGI it. and a really just weird musical number. Ooh, eat they, da, 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 da. which is just more yeah. like, hey, let's try remaking the cantina scene, but bigger. Yeah, uh, more weird. See, yeah. I mean, what else? What else did they change in the special edition? The only other thing I could think of is that they kind of added to the Sarlacc. Cause uh, it 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 was yeah. just the pit with teeth, and then they added that weird, like, head 
thing, penis burpee, thing, penis, penis vagina thing. weird thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was already like a vagina in the desert. Now it was a trap. <laughs> Which brings in the age old question. I said that joke last week and it got cut off. And I don't think I sold it that's as well. This, I don't think I sold it as no, well. No, this that's time. A, no, no, actually, the setup was better. The setup was actually better this time. I tried to help you with that one, set yeah. you up, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the setup was actually better. For, this brings, time. It brings in the age old question. Our traps gay. <laughs> Honestly, yes. fuck Total Biscuit for his response to that. Yeah, he's. he's I, I love. I love uh, Kelty Phoenix's response to that. He's just, yes, yes, they are. Yes, it is. Is that what Jesse said? That's what uh, Celtic Phoenix said. Uh, huh. In his uh, Q and A video that he released a couple days ago. Uh, there had to like, be like three. Di- no, like three different because- people. Yeah. Three different Cause people. Because even, even Jesse didn't make a joke about it. And Jesse always makes jokes about things. So there must have been... See that one it, on it is a dumb internet meme. Yeah. But because, anyway. of that one an- because of that one anime character that's getting a lot of circulation. I just... To be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't really the, get it. The one who isn't... Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, that's old news anyway. The new news is uh, is how Humble Bundle got bought by uh, by IGN. How? No, I or no, uh, Fox. Fox is about to freaking be bought out by Disney. Oh, that too. That's right. Yeah, yep, that's the other one. It's confirmed. Like, how? Nice. No, how? no, no. It's not confirmed yet, but it's, it's, it's still they're still at the table. Oh. <laughs> it's still on the table, which is kind of scary oh. enough because I feel it's like... Fox. It's one of the original five. Yeah, <laughs> kind of a yeah. Actually, the other I don't, is it thought is what happens if Disney buys Fox because then there's going to be no conservative news channel anymore. <laughs> yeah. Not that I. I, mean, I don't know if it'll go that far. I don't know if it will, but it might because I don't know if that's the image Disney wants. But who knows? Yeah, every news channel is a conservative. That's the funny part about it. You know the people that own CNN vote vote conservative because they want their money. It's yeah, uh, come on, think yeah. about it. Who own, yeah. if you own CNN, you would not vote Democrat. No way. Couldn't imagine it. At that point, you just want your money. Yeah, there's a lot of dirty tactics with news media. Always, always has been. The internet, yeah. the internet just made it worse. At work today, somebody's like, there's no such thing as a moderate Republican. I was like, After, as a registered independent, I have to remind you that that also means there's no such thing as a moderate Democrat anymore either. Well, no, I mean, they're, they're out there. It's just the whole, I, modern, I, I, the whole modern internet perception of uh, has... every, everyone I don't like is either Hitler or Stalin. Yeah. Those guys, yeah, they're pretty worried major and some of you Russian history I can tell you that the worst social justice warrior and as of right now probably the worst KKK member is not as bad as Joseph Stalin quite a few million people to be as bad as Joseph Stalin just gonna say that yeah or Mao the Dong Zedong I think he killed Chinese history though so I wouldn't know yeah, Mao Zedong was trouble. Anyway, yeah. anyway. <laughs> so, speaking speaking of being redeemed from killing millions of people, Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah, shows up as yeah, a Force so, Ghost. Yep. Somehow. Somehow. As, as, yeah, as Hayden Christensen. As Hayden Christensen, Christensen now. Yeah. Technically. Yeah. Which okay, weird. the funny thing is, which the thing is, I actually don't. That doesn't bother me, to be perfectly honest. Of all the things that bother me about the things that Lucas retconned. Hashtag Han shot first. But that doesn't actually bother me that much because I could honestly see an argument either way for like how he would be re- like re- his redeemed state or whatever it would be. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't actually have a problem with that one to be perfectly honest. There, there have been 
Yeah, there were worse retcons. So. Yeah, there were many worse retcons. Like, I don't really care either way. It doesn't really matter. He's a force ghost. Who even cares what he looks like? It doesn't matter. Like, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think we're ready for a final verdict. I think so, yeah. 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 Um, For me, still a great movie. Not as strong as the first two, but nothing is. It's a 9 out of 10 for me. Uh, my only complaints, really, is that uh, it's, a little, it's not as tight of a script as the previous two films. The first half does not flow as well into the second half as other Star Wars movies. For me, it's like it as much as um, episode five, to be perfectly honest, because to me, episode five is the biggest glaring weakness of of like how they did the whole Darth Vader reveal thing. And not just the line itself, as I talked about last time. There's more to it than that, but I think that's the one where it's the most obvious. And uh, I think that the... The final space battle is still my favorite in this one, and the that final scene with um, uh, Vader, Luke, and the Emperor is, as far as individual scenes go, it's the best scene of the whole Star Wars franchise, in my opinion. Yeah. It's the same level as Episode Five for me personally. I know that technically I couldn't rate it as high because of the e- the the Ewok. As much as I don't despise the Ewoks, there are things that it just doesn't really. Though otherwise, it would have been like the exact same score. I think it was like a nine point five. I think is what I gave um, the other one. So it's like a nine for me. Also, maybe it's still the one I enjoy. I enjoy watching the most individually. I I don't know why I really like it, but I know it's not as good of a movie as four for sure. The original Star Wars is still the best Star Wars. Yeah. But they did so, end it right. Sorry. sorry, it's a satisfying ending at least. That's something I can yeah. be very happy that they did well. Yeah. Yeah, and for me, episode six is like, I know it's that kind of like you said, it's not as good as the uh, other, as the first two, as episode four and episode five. Uh, but it's still, like, my favorite to watch yep, right same. next to episode four. And uh, it's still one of the – I still think it's a great movie. And kind of like we said, you know, that last scene alone is just the perfect way to wrap it up and is just one of the uh, best scenes that they've had – or, in my opinion, one of the best scenes in, like, film history. And I think it's a just a great te- – or. And I think it was all just really well done. Even like as much as I despise the Ewoks, they uh, like they still can't ruin that last scene for me. And so this movie is, yeah, in my opinion, what, still one of the best out there. So, yeah. and it's the thing that's just a shame. A shame about it, in my opinion, is the biggest thing is that if all the other flaws, like the fact that it doesn't flow as well into the next scene, like the first half doesn't flow as well, I think all of that. If used Wookiees instead of Ewoks, that's literally all they had to do, and I think this movie would have been almost as good as the other ones. You wouldn't have so many people that kind of mark it down as much. I think that's yeah. what I think the biggest shame is: is that just that changed so much. If they just use Wookiees, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah, just those subjective things do keep it from, yeah, like, yeah, objectively, it is kept from being as good as episodes four and five, but it's still really good. It's still great. It's still not like, I wouldn't call it like a major drop off, like where people say, oh, you know, this film, like, you know, they get, we say that because it's really just the Ewoks that let it down at all. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, otherwise, it's not like, the whole movie is a big letdown. It's the yeah, no, the definitely. ending is still extremely satisfying. That yeah. is something that's a really big deal that they got right. Yep. 
All right, so I think we're ready to shut it down for now. I think so, yep. Um, yep. I'm not going to really do plugins, uh, just because, you know, kind of want to wrap this up so i can watch the next video yeah. for the plugins <laughs> yeah yeah watch yeah. watch our phantom Menace podcast which will be up later today from when you're first watching this so yeah, yeah. it'll probably already be up that one's gonna be fun yes yeah. that's actually the, <laughs> yes of all the star wars podcasts i think that's the one i'm looking forward to the most yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it so yeah uh, have a good day to you all viewers bye